In this video, we're gonna talk about three mistakes that I see tons of rhythm electric players make. And stick around for number three because it is so simple, I seriously debated keeping it in this video, but I see so many players make this mistake, I had to include it. So let's get started. Here's the first thing you should stop doing. Stop strumming. This is a common mistake because so many of us guitar players started on acoustic and transitioned to electric, myself included. Now the big mistake would be assuming that your approach is the exact same approach, just with a different instrument. I would consider that a mistake, and I think it makes a huge difference if you modify what you're doing with your strumming hand. Instead of strumming everything like this, here's four different moves that instantly make you sound more like an electric player than an acoustic player. Palm muting. All downstrokes. The third would be diamonds. And the fourth is arpeggios. If you mix and match these techniques within any given song, you will instantly sound more like an electric guitar player and less like an acoustic guitar player who's filling in on electric. I feel like I could end the video there, but I've still got two more points I wanna cover. The next thing that you should quit doing, stop avoiding the capo. If you were on a job site and you only used hand tools because you considered power tools cheating, that would greatly limit what you could get done. And yet I see so many players working twice or three times as hard and getting limited results because they don't believe in using these. To be honest, I feel like every guitar player should own one of these. This gives you access to open strings and chord voicings that you wouldn't otherwise have. This is so necessary for all of the flat and the sharp keys. Now, if you only ever play songs in E or G, obviously this isn't necessary. But if you're like me and you play on a worship team and sometimes the key that's assigned is a D flat or a B flat or A flat or C flat or B sharp, <clears throat> then this little piece of metal is worth its weight in gold. I've got a bit of a system with this and where I would use this and where I would not use this. Let me run through that real quick. I typically don't use the capo above the fourth fret. And the reason for that is pretty simple. I like the way open guitar chords sound in their low form. I want this thing sounding like an electric guitar and not like an electric mandolin. Now capoing way up the neck could give you a cool sound for a part if you're trying to do it as like an effect, but I'm typically not gonna want that sound for an entire song. So I normally keep it down below the fifth fret. And by the time you get up to the fifth fret, there's other voicings that you could have used that in my opinion would have sounded better. So with that in mind, let me quickly run you through my preferred chord voicings for these key ranges. If I'm playing in the keys E to G sharp, I'm gonna use E shapes. If I'm playing A to C sharp, I'm gonna use A shapes. If I'm playing from D to F sharp, I'm gonna use D shapes. If I'm playing from G to B, I'm gonna use G shapes. And if I'm playing from C to E, I'm gonna use C shapes. And you'll notice that there's a pretty good amount of overlap between those keys and those shapes. And that's actually to your benefit. If you're playing with other guitar players, you should have at least two options to give you some variance from the other guitar player. Now, when I say E shapes, G shapes, and D shapes, I'm not just talking about those three chords, I'm actually talking about all seven chords within each of those keys. I'm gonna fly through these really fast, but here's what it would sound like if you're playing in the key of B flat, but you're using G shapes. Here's the one chord, two chord, three chord, or one over three, four chord, five chord, six chord, seven chord, which is actually a five over seven, and back to the one chord. So instead of thinking of songs as every guitar chord imaginable, I'm thinking of them in these seven shapes and then moving that around where I need to. But I also do that with E. And A. And so forth. 
I've been thinking about making a dedicated video for this concept and including some sort of PDF that has like a cheat sheet with all of the numbers and all of the shapes and all of the keys. If that sounds like something you'd use, let me know in the comments. And if I get enough demand, I'll make it. But if you say nothing, it'll probably never happen. All right, let's hop to mistake number three. And this one's so simple, but I see so many guitar players make it. Stop using one pickup for everything. Now, of course, this is not gonna apply to every player in every genre of music. But if you play worship music like I do, we utilize all three of the pickup positions. Ignoring this switch is kind of like wearing three different guitars, but only ever playing one of them. What? You're carrying around an instrument with three different voices. So utilize those different voices. I see lots of players that play the same pickup position for an entire song or even an entire set. Don't make that mistake. Utilize all of the creativity that you have within these three different positions. And if you're a strap player and you only ever play the neck pickup, so help me. But for real though, this may sound simple, but a lot of times we find our comfortable position and then we just stay in it. It happens to the best of us, we find our sound, and then we develop a rut that we then get stuck in. Don't do that. Explore the different tones within your instrument. And if you have an instrument that only sounds good with one of them, you might need to invest some time, energy, and maybe even some money into getting some other voices on your instrument. If you don't ever do anything about it, it's honestly like if you broke three strings on your guitar and you never bothered to fix it. You're minimizing the potential of your instrument and you as a player. Utilizing all of the sounds of your guitar is especially necessary if you're mimicking somebody else's guitar parts. Like for me, I play on a worship team. A lot of times I listen to somebody else's guitar parts and I'm trying to reproduce what they did. Reproducing the part itself is a lot of the battle, but that last bit that really sells a guitar part is the pickup sound. Before we move on, let's do a quick ear training exercise. I'm gonna play the same part with all three pickup positions and you get to guess which is which. If you guessed neck position, then bridge position, then middle position, you are absolutely right. And if you got that wrong, this is something that you can work on. When you're learning somebody else's part, try auditioning different pickup positions to see which one sounds the closest to the recording that you're listening to. Not only will this get you closer to the sound that you might be trying to replicate, but it also may give you one more tool in your toolbox for something else to try when you're creating guitar parts for yourself. Work on this, you're gonna get better. Now, if you're already applying all these techniques, but you still feel like you're in a bit of a rut, you might want to try changing up your chord voicings. And it might be as simple as changing one note, which I explain in this video. If you're not really into that, YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Either way, keep getting better. <laughs> 